It is the true spirit of the FinTech Festival, opening doors to the new digital future, hoisting sails to the winds of change. And yet, change often appears daunting, unsettling, destabilizing, disrupting, especially true for technological change. They disrupt our habit, our emotions, our jobs, our social interaction, for better or for worse. The key is to harness the benefits while managing the risks. I want to frame the issue in terms of the changing nature of money and the fintech revolution. Second, I would like to evaluate the role of central banks in this new financial landscape, especially in relation to providing digital currency. And third, I would like to look at the downsides, the risks, if you will, and consider how they can be minimized. Let me begin with the big issue, the change of money. How is money changing? When commerce was local, centered around the town square, money in the form of token, shells to begin with, metal coins eventually, was sufficient and it was efficient. The exchange of coins from one hand to another settled transactions. So long as the coins were valid, and that was determined by just glancing, inspecting, scratching, or sometimes biting into them, it did not matter which hand held them. Do I take you through a little bit of history background? Well, because the fintech revolution questions the two forms of money that we just discussed, coins and commercial bank deposit. And it questions the role of the state in providing money. We are at a historic turning point. You, young or not so young, doesn't matter, but bold entrepreneurs gathered here today, you are not just inventing new services, you are reinventing the history of money. You're drawing a completely new future, actually. And we are all in the process of adapting. Well, I think if we're solving a real problem and it's a, at scale, uh, then I think it's a compliment. I think the most important thing that is going on in crypto is understanding what is real and what is just hype. Uh, some, I think, may look back on Bitcoin and find that it was the Napster of digital assets. What I mean by that is Napster was the first to digitize music and demonstrate, hey, if you digitize music, you can do a lot of cool things with that. But ultimately, they were circumventing trademark laws, they were circumventing royalty payments, and governments stepped in, and Napster was not successful. But Spotify, iTunes, Pandora, they were very successful. I think what you'll find is that maybe the next generation of digital assets ends up solving some of the original problems that Bitcoin set out to solve. So RippleNet is trying to take on Swift. What's been the traction light? Who's come on board? Well, it's interesting as you step back and look at this. If you and I decided we were going to send $10,000 to California today, the fastest way for us to do it would be to drive to the airport and fly it there. That's a crazy thing to think about when you're in the age of the Internet and you know, we're used to information on demand. When we think about the, the customers that have come on board, it's because we're solving that real problem. We're changing the nature of a payment taking days to settle to California to seconds. Shakes up. So... Changing gears, last issue, um, Governor Carney, I really appreciate your time and thoughts on this. You dropped a bombshell in the lunch in there. That's the way I was it. It's almost like a mic drop. You are exiting this job, exiting almost that. like a mic drop. And you said we need to go to a global virtual currency. It's a 23-page speech. It's very heavy. Give us the thumbnail. Why? Did why you just can't... read? The, I want to know. Did you just read the conclusion of the speech? Steve, no, or did you I read. read I read pages? fourteen pages, okay, and then good. I jumped okay, to the okay. conclusion. So the so, so so what's the point? Give us the thumbnail. Why can't the dollar be the global currency? Okay, but the dollar is the global currency. We know that. The challenge is that the U.S. share of the global economy has been uh, reducing. Uh, the dollar's share of payments, not just financial assets, but payments. A lot of payments between countries that have nothing to do with the U.S. are in dollars. And what happens in situations like we're in today, where the U.S. economy, to its credit, is relatively strong, is doing better, 
And the Fed has been doing the right thing, which is, uh, you know, they've adjusted policy, they tightened policy as it was strengthening. Uh, now they're making, you know, the Fed is doing the right thing, but they have adjusted and policy is relatively strong. That means rest of world policy is, strong, is tighter than it needs to be. And that feeds back on the U.S. economy in a way uh, that ultimately slows this economy. Um, and it leads to a substandard outcome. And in a world where you only have limited policy space, it's a dangerous place to be. And it's, so the trade issues we're talking about are reinforced by the structure of the monetary system. Now, I mean, you've asked a big question, so just I give have. me a second to, but, right, okay. but now the issue is, you don't just jump to something new overnight. Um, and the, uh, what we want in a multipolar world, I think we'd agree that we've got European engine, we've got the Chinese engine, we've got the US engine of this economy, multipolar world, you need a multipolar currency. The question is, how do you get there? And I laid out some ideas of how you would get there. And the bottom and line, more Governor, possible. is that is it all of the pressure on the different in growth around the world would not fall on the dollar exchange rate. Yeah. It would be spread out if it, if it was a global basket of currencies. It would saying. be spread out as a global basket of currencies. Uh, it's better for the system as a whole. It, it's better, to, it raises that equilibrium level of interest rates. Right. It gives central banks more policy, but it gives people who are watching uh, greater returns on, uh, on their savings. Well, certainly. We have seen the IMF alongside Ripple and images blasted all over the internet. We have seen the managing director and chairwoman of the International Monetary Fund praise Ripple and what Ripple is trying to accomplish with the digital asset XRP over and over again. Ripple has been spotted with IMF and central banks on more multiple occasions. Ripple product on-demand liquidity will be the foundation of the new world order. IMF is holding XRP in the new ESDR. Ripple has positioned itself in a very strategic position, a position that will come out victory in the end. Ripple XRP not just inventing new services, Ripple XRP is reinventing the history of money. Ripple is drawing a completely new future actually, and we are all in the process of adapting. A new wind is blowing, of digitalization. Christine Lagarde from the IMF has revealed crucial information regarding how the IMF envisions what the new financial system will look like. IMF and World Bank are working together with Ripple. Don't be left behind. It is coming. Our lives will change overnight.